and where you are uh, in the world today. And thank you very much for joining our Hangout, where we're going to talk about e-discovery in a cloud-first world, the disembodied voice that you hear right now. And I should be coming uh, on camera here momentarily is uh, Barkley Blair. I'm the uh, founder and executive director of the Information Governance Initiative. And earlier this year, we worked with uh, one of our valued supporters, Viewpoint, to dig into this issue. And we wrote a report uh, on this very topic. And today, we're going to kind of use that report as a jumping off point for our discussion about a whole host of issues uh, related to uh, information governance, uh, how it can and help you address uh, many of the challenges associated with e-discovery in the cloud. And uh, I think we're going to have a great discussion. What we try and do with the Google Hangout format is to keep it a little bit looser than a, than a, a presentation or a webinar. If you will, we do have some slides, which you'll see me uh, pop up, and I'll disappear uh, uh, when they when they come up, just to kind of keep us uh, on track and highlight some of the key points. <clears throat> um, so uh, look for that. So I'm actually going to switch over to that, and we'll take care of some housekeeping um, before we we get into the discussion. So. Uh, obviously, we are doing a Google Hangout today, so if you've never done one before, you might notice that there's a slight delay between uh, uh, the live stream that we're actually producing right now and when it actually arrives over the internet, uh, hopefully, uh, to whatever device you happen to be watching uh, us on and listening to us on. So if you ask a question, uh, we uh, it may be out of sync <laughs> with what you see uh, on the video, but don't worry about that. We'll take care of that. We, we love your questions. We want your questions. Uh, anything that comes to mind as we're talking through this topic, please uh, send them our way. And you can see the instructions on the screen here. You can uh, use the Q&A button on the Google Hangout page. Uh, if you don't want to do that, you can also just email uh, them to us. You can uh, tweet them to us. You can send a smoke signal, a carrier pigeon, whatever else you might want to do. And we'll try and get to as many of those questions as we can today. And those that we don't get to, uh, we'll take a look at them and, and answer them in a, in a blog post as, as a follow-up. Uh, as I mentioned, there's a white paper that uh, we'll use as a jumping off point today. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit more about that uh, at the end. But um, you can uh, go get that today uh, from our the report uh, uh, section of the IGI community website. Um, the, this, the page uh, that you're seeing this on today, the video will be uh, there all day, and then uh, the recording will be available uh, as of tomorrow uh, in the community site, uh, IGI site. So um, let's talk about our panelists uh, today. And I'm really excited uh, by uh, who we have with us today in the Hangout. Now we've got, you know, this technology is far from perfect. Uh, uh, so far, uh, they're still working out the bugs. Uh, you know, I guess a, a little software company like Google, you know, doesn't have a lot of resources to throw at something like this. So um, there's there's a few bugs that we, we it worked fine this morning, but uh, for some reason Tara uh, was not able to actually join the hangout. So uh, we 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 uh, used a, a string and two cups, and we've got her uh, dialed in by phone. Uh, so hopefully that will work uh, fine. You won't see her smiling face. Uh, today, other than uh, on this slide, but you'll hear her voice. So, um, Tara uh, heads up records and information management at SunTrust Bank. And Tara, do you want to tell us a little bit more about yourself uh, and your background? Sure. Um, I'm Tara Ladner, and I've been, I guess, in this fun, exciting industry for about 15 years. And and as we can all tell, um, technology is clearly not on my side today, and I even dressed up for everyone, so I'm really sad about it. Um, I'm currently president-elect of Vonda International, and uh, I guess what I do in my paying job is I lead the records and information management group here at SunTrust Bank, and um, although it sounds kind of a narrow scope, we really work to facilitate the collaboration of all of our IG stakeholders within SunTrust. And our goal is to make sure we're managing information, of course, to meet compliance, but also that we're able to garner the value from I guess I would say as a JV, I personally liaison with the legal group, and I represent their requirements a lot as we um, move forward in, in migrating our information into a governed platform. 
Excellent. Well, thanks for joining us today, Tara. I know that you've got a lot on your plate and a lot going on, but uh, what, what you, uh, and I know I'm just sort of prepping with you for this, uh, you know, what you have been uh, doing there and the projects you've been taking on and your approach, uh, I think hearing about those will be extremely valuable for uh, our audience today. We also uh, are fortunate enough to have uh, Bill Shute with us, who is Chief Strategy and Marketing Officer at Viewpoint. Viewpoint is uh, one of the first supporters of the IGI, and we're, we're honored by that. And uh, They've been a great uh, supporter uh, of ours and doing lots of innovative things in the industry. Um, Bill, why don't you tell us a bit about your background and, and perspective? Sure, Barkley. Um, well, good morning and afternoon to everyone. Um, so I've been in the industry about 20 years uh, and uh, kind of going back to when software as a service really first uh, uh, reared its head in the market, um, have been focused on uh, helping organizations manage um, information, content, business processes, and improving all of those um, for, uh, for a couple of decades. Uh, my role here at uh, a Viewpoint, as uh, Barkley uh, discussed, is, is focused on strategy and marketing. Uh, I came to the company to launch OnPoint as the uh, leader in the product group uh, and um, have been um, talking about cloud, cloud strategies, cloud adoption um, um, over the last four years um, and uh, really uh, discussing them with the market and um, with the practitioners, um, you know, how cloud uh, can benefit uh, and can be innovative and a differentiator in the market uh, and uh, what some of the challenges are um, for it. So. Very uh, um, pleased to be able to participate in this uh, um, uh, drop-in and um, look forward to the questions. Great. Well, thanks, Bill. And um, I know you and I have had a lot of great conversations about cloud and IG and some of the other things that we're, we're going to talk about today. So uh, I'm really looking forward to covering some of that ground and some new ground uh, today as well. So um, for those of you who don't know, Barkley Blair. I head up the Information Governance Initiative. I, I run a boutique consulting firm also that does uh, strategy and policy work around information governance and have been, I guess, in this space since about 2001 and have always kind of described it as this collision of legal and technology issues. And of course, we see that throwing off sparks in all kinds of ways uh, over the past 10 or 15 years. And, and, and right now, of course, uh, security and data breaches and privacy and uh, those kinds of issues are very much top of mind I think for us as consumers and also for large organizations that are charged with with protecting and and managing that information and as we'll talk about today uh, I think certainly there's a security aspect to some of the prominent failures that we've seen but what's interesting is that it, very immediately it becomes obvious that the next question after kind of the hardcore security question is, you know, should this information exist in the first place or why do we have this? What value does it have? And therefore, how much time and attention and money should we spend on managing it? So we're going to talk about uh, that today. I think we've got a, a great discussion lined up in the sense that we've got Tara who is, as you've heard, an, a, a practitioner with deep experience, someone who is um, you know, has a legal background as a lawyer, uh, but also you know technology savvy and and uh, has this foundational knowledge around records management as well that she brings to the table. And, and as I say, Bill, who represents uh, and is responsible largely for a product line that functions, you know, as you'll hear from Bill, I'm sure that functions in a, in a very highly regulated and complex and demanding environment, and and they deliver. Viewpoint delivers cloud uh, uh, services into that environment. So a good, a good uh, pair, I think, to have this discussion. So um, let's uh, uh, do something kind of fun here to start off uh, our discussion. Uh, you know, no presentation, I suppose, is complete without a quote from Steve uh, Jobs, since you know, of course, he knew everything, of course. But you know, I, I like this quote that <clears throat> we used in the white paper going back to 1997. And sort of, you know, this sort of Jobsian expression of, of course, it's obvious that we should move uh, to what we now call the cloud and um, has been called various things uh, over actually several decades, depending on, on how you look at it. But so let's start with uh, something fun here, which is a lightning round. And so 
I like to do these, uh, give the panelists 60 seconds to answer a question that, of course, I'm sure we could talk about uh, all day. And so we'll, we'll put them on the clock and we'll see how they do. So we'll start with uh, Bill first. So Bill, your, your 60 second lightning round question is, is the march towards cloud unstoppable and, and why? Well, um, absolutely. I think uh, I think um, the movement towards the cloud is is really um, uh, represented in um, in all of industry with regards to the need to um, modernize um, technology, the need to uh, you know improve uh, innovation, agility, reduce costs, uh, as well as risk. And I think um, uh, when you think about uh, modernization. When you think about uh, being able to um, deliver um, in a in a better manner, I think cloud um, is is that new utility. Uh, I think if you you think about how um, systems, technology, data is uh, delivered. Now, what you put in the cloud, um, I think that's that's really the big the big question. Right. And information governance standpoint, uh, the uh, the types of uh, content, the types of applications, the type of functionality and capability uh, that you need. Uh, is very different, and I think the the white paper that you mentioned early on uh, talks a lot about um, the different uh, types of clouds, um, the different uh, types of use cases that might be out there. Uh, but I think overall, when you think of um, uh, utilization of cloud, organizations need to redeploy resources, redeploy uh, assets, uh, and uh, meet what their uh, what their lines of business and their customers demand. And I think delivery of technology via the cloud, and we'll get into the details about that later on, uh, is inevitable. Um, so um, absolutely. So 75 seconds, not too bad. I, I didn't cut you off. I, I think you were, you were. Uh, uh, I didn't want it. You had a full head of steam, and, and I think what you're saying was right on. I guess what I'm kind of curious about too, Bill, is you know you're out there talking to people about the cloud, and particularly environments where they're very sensitive to things like compliance and regulation and security and privacy and so on. I mean, what are the, what, you know, so, so if you were to kind of play devil's advocate here with yourself, you know, what are the big things that in their minds are the, are the barriers to the cloud or why do they see it not as an inevitable march towards that uh, type of delivery? Well, I think uh, the, the uh, those types of barriers and objections have changed over the last three to four years. I think yeah. Um, obviously, security was a big one early on, uh, and I think a lot of organizations felt that uh, the cloud did not offer uh, the amount of data prote uh, protection for their data informa information security. And I think um, uh, the last uh, 12 to 18 months has uh, clearly shown um, that organizations aren't as prepared as they thought they were with regards to how to safeguard um, their, uh, their information. And uh, utilizing an appropriate cloud service provider um, can really improve your um, your security um, posture. I think uh, control over um, that information and control over the systems um, uh, were uh, were definitely some objections uh, and some barriers early on. And again, depending on the type of cloud that you're using, you may be actually um, you know running the controls, or you're uh, you've got a trusted provider that. Right. Uh, Managing those applications um, for you, and then the, the third piece is I think you hit on it is the regulatory and, and compliance pressures. Your cloud provider has to sync up with um, what the uh, the needs and requirements are within your organization. So, um, whereas one cloud may be perfect for one organization, it may not be the other. So, I think you've got to be able to um, slice and dice it a little bit when you talk it about when you talk about objections and inevitability. Um, because uh, you know the shoe doesn't uh, always fit each foot. There. Sure. So that's a good, you know, good message, and we'll dig into that. You know that you know what what is the cloud, and what do we mean when we say cloud? And there's not just one thing. And and I think it's critical that practitioners on the IG side, in particular, understand uh, what the people around them mean when they say cloud, or they have object objections to cloud and e-discovery and make sure you're on the same page. We'll talk about that as well. So Tara, I'm curious for your your, your first lightning round question, 60 seconds. Um, you're one of those people that Bill's talking about, someone sitting in the chair with responsibility for uh, making a decision about how you incorporate or whether you incorporate cloud into your your environment, and, and you made that decision. Uh, and you're probably in the process, of, you know, you're always making it, I suppose, as you go along. 
but you know why was the why the cloud why for you you know why now we still got you online Tara I think that um, I, the, the most important thing I think is that SunTrust was really moving towards becoming a digital enterprise we were really working and we still are um, to find a place where, where we're finding value in our information, you know, where where we're being where we're able to use our information as the value as the asset to the, or, to the organization that it really is. Um, information drives, of course, to competitive advantage. It helps us better service our customers. And so we were really looking to become a true digital enterprise. Um, I think, you know, as most companies, we really wanted to try to get the cost out of our infrastructure and, and the cost out of the support of that. I think everyone's realizing that storage is not um, cheap as what's formerly thought. And then, of course, most importantly to me, we wanted to be able to imply the governance. We have information all over the place, as you can imagine, across all kinds of platforms with different schemas um, and different semantics. and. Um, you're just really unable to systemically apply any sort of governance against that. And so we really wanted to, to be able to do that. So those are kind of our three driving points for, for why the cloud and why now. That's great and that's useful. And, and you know, and I and I, I like that thought which we'll we'll dig into that this concept of of centralization or consolidation of your information into a, a you know, it's almost a return, uh, you know, back to sort of main mainframe concepts, which of course are at the root of, cloud, you know, shared services, cloud computing, whatever you want to call it, and that actually providing not only a, a potential economic upside, but also just increasing your ability to manage the information itself. So that's great, and let's we'll we'll dig into that a bit. So, Bill, uh, your 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 last lightning round question. Um, do you think that you know, out there talking to your your customers and prospects are are organizations generally prepared to conduct e-discovery in the cloud environments that they're using? Yeah, I would say generally the answer would be no. Um, I think organizations, uh, depending on again what type of cloud that they're um, using, I think the uh, it depends on how centralized the control has been with regards to. Uh, employees' use of clouds and lines of business and organizations' use of clouds. I think uh, in the in the white paper um, did a nice job pointing out that you know many organizations um, when they started adopting uh, cloud usage for different applications were really not thinking about e-discovery um, right. at that point in time. So I think um, with, like any situation when you have an e-discovery process that gets, kicks off. Uh, you've got to go find uh, you got to go find the the data and uh, figure out the ways that you're going to collect it um, and uh, and bring it back. So I think a lot of organizations do struggle here, um, depending upon uh, cloud usage. I think the organizations that have done a good job preparing themselves to manage content in all of its forms um, uh, are much better prepared because then they can apply that roadmap, that framework. Um, to whatever the cloud service provider, and they've almost got a, a list of, of criteria with regards to can you provide these types of uh, capabilities to me, which really uh, allows you and enables you to uh, to be able to execute on uh, on that approach. And is there a is there a commonality amongst the organizations that are farther ahead than others? I mean, what binds them together, or is there something you observe there? Well, again, uh, in, the, um, in the more regulated world, I think uh, you see uh, much more um, uh, much more control over the usage of of uh, different types of cloud services. So uh, those organizations, um, uh, I think, are are better prepared. Right. Um, I think, uh, when you get uh, outside of that, I think um, um, definitely uh, it's a different uh, it's a different world. But when they've done the um, the hard work with regards to policies, procedures, and, and really understand what their game plan uh, is with regards to uh, managing uh, the content that's external and um, thus being able to uh, put it through an e-discovery process, um, then I think they're um, definitely better off. Right. Well, Tara, let's turn to you for your second and last uh, lightning round question. So I'm just curious, you know, uh, as an IG professional, someone with a legal background, deep understanding of records management, Lots of experience uh, building programs. What were your kind of personal uh, objections or concerns 
about the cloud that you needed to overcome to go down this path? What what were your, what were your thoughts that you you needed to address uh, to to move forward? Uh, yeah, I think my biggest concerns were um, first. Am I really going to be able to manage the information myself? Am I truly going to have the interfaces I need to make the governance decision um, and, and to place legal holds if, if needed? And if I'm not, when we were talking initially about going into the, the cloud provider, can I really identify all of my requirements? Like, can I get everything out of my head onto paper so that I'm protecting myself in a, in a service agreement with a provider um, to make sure that that information is managed. Because as we all know, who, who are living this space as a living, this is not easy stuff to do. And so I, I was concerned about either being able to do it myself or get those all requirements all identified and written down. I guess the next thing I worried about is I, I worried about the integration of our existing systems because we have really complicated systems. Right. And the ability for our business systems to kind of cross, talk across the wires to feed the information that was needed to apply governance. Um, and then, of course, I was concerned about private security, accessibility, performance, every, everything that, because I was taking my name and my reputation on this endeavor. I mean, this was my project and my baby, so I was right. really kind of getting, it, getting behind it. So all of those were in my head also. So do you feel, Tara, I mean, compared to other sort of procurement activities you've been involved in or, or big, you know, strategies. Did you spend more time thinking about your requirements and uh, drafting contracts or negotiating contracts than you normally would, uh, do you think? Um, I, I think that this, this endeavor and the amount of time, I, I spent a lot of time on requirements and I'm getting the contracts right here and I think that that's really important. Um, I think that this helped me in future agreements to know exactly what I was looking for. So I, I think it set the bar <laughs> and um, built those kind of common requirements that I now am able to reuse across other platforms. Right. So the work was a lot, but it was worth it in the end. Right. And so where are you in your cloud uh, strategy right now? I mean, how? what have you implemented and, and how far along are you? Um, we're actually pretty far along. We've moved uh, several, I want to say about 10 applications from our current repositories. And when I say current repositories, I'm talking about the file nets, the document, the image presses, the legacy repositories that, of course, were built with no nod towards governance when, when they were put in place. Um, we've moved about 10 of those applications. Um, the biggest one would be we have 44 million customer documents, all the documents that support our everyday customers are um, in the platform and are being managed. Um, we're also in the email implementation now. Yeah. We have about 7,000 users pushed to the email system, and we are slowly rolling out, not because the system isn't able to take us faster. They would love for us to move faster, but as you can imagine, an email project and taking away PSD files from people is a huge change management project right. more than right. anything else. And so we're very slowly moving people to the new platform and training them along the way and giving them the support that they need to get there. So 44 million documents and, and where, so those were just everywhere you had them in multiple repositories, file shares and things like that or, or what, where were the bulk of those documents prior to this? Um, the bulk of those documents were actually in an existing repository yeah. itself, but it was a legacy repository. It wasn't trustworthy. It didn't have um, the support that it needed, again, because it was legacy. It was out of support from the vendor. Um, and, and those were our most important customers. Those were our client documents. Those are the signature cards that we review if you come in to cash a check. And so those were our first the first thing we moved to the platform, and that was a huge endeavor to move that many, but they actually came from one place. Right. Uh, I was talking to a client this morning who said that uh, he did a bit of digging and discovered that there's 12 million documents in SAP, and he thinks he's probably the only one in the organization who actually knows, of, knows that or thinks of it that way, um, and that struck me as a pretty interesting scenario, too, that you have this environment that 
functionally is probably managed mostly as a database, but in fact it's one of their biggest document repositories. Yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, let's let's. Um, well, thanks for, for for doing that and just responding to those questions out of the gate. I thought it'd be a good way for us to um, just get started and start to dig into some of these issues. So um, let's let's take a little step back now, and you know, we talked about the importance of uh, making sure we, we're all using the same language when we talk about cloud. Um, so I thought it would be worth just taking a couple of minutes to. Um, to talk about that, to talk about um, kind of the different cloud models and what they mean, just so we all are also our, our audience is on the same page with us. Bill, do you want to kind of take us through that? Just um, you know, give us a kind of a baseline and and what what cloud actually means in this context. Sure, Barkley. So, uh, so again, um, you know, public, private, and and hybrid, uh, and uh, depending on who you talk to, they'll throw uh, a few other slight variance uh, in uh, when talking about the cloud, but uh, the, the easiest way to, to think of it is public cloud, you know, th these are um, uh, these are public cloud providers like, um, you know, like an Amazon or a Google or a Azure, you know, Microsoft, um, where um, your information is, is um, you know, accessible via the internet, um, potentially contents commingled, um, you're not quite sure where uh, the information, you know, may be housed. Um, uh, the uh, um, uh, from a privacy security standpoint, uh, perhaps um, you know not as uh, as secure as you uh, would like. Um, you know, uh, Dropbox, uh, those types of things would be um, you know potential examples of of uh, public cloud, private cloud. Uh, there's a couple variants there. Um, uh, originally, private cloud. Um, um, the most often uh, uh, use of that term was cloud technology that was deployed on premise for an individual organization where they built their own cloud and it right. was, uh, that organization's firewalls um, and but you used and got the benefit of all of the cloud technology to be able to, um, to do specific tasks maybe it's product development maybe you know it could be lots of different types of things uh, that um, very quickly um, from a uh, from a definition standpoint um, uh, a hosted private uh, cloud, and that's something that Viewpoint really has been doing since 2000, when the company was formed, um, and to be able to provide um, uh, these types of, of uh, dedicated, purpose-built uh, cloud services for uh, our customers, and that's where you have a a, a cloud that's set up um, and designed um, specifically for that uh, end-user customer with the same types of uh, and levels of security, or or perhaps even higher. Uh, than you might have on your existing systems, and going back to something that uh, Tara talked about, you know, when you apply cloud, you know, in the information governance space and managing content, being able to search for content, being able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, dispose or or produce content, um, those types of things are are critically important. Um, so private cloud, again, um, uh, your data is um, is uh, significantly more secure uh, and segregated from. Uh, other uh, organizations or people's data, and hybrid really talks about the use of um, uh, different types of cloud services with um, that uh, deployment of cloud uh, on your prem. So when you think about the repositories that Tara was talking about, when you think about uh, in, our, in our case uh, with the OnPoint platform, you know we were able to take those and, and remove or replace those repositories as part of as part IG platform that we deliver. Thus, us, thus that the us. Uh, those on, on friend. Friend. There's other there, there could be technology that needs to be on site, site. need to, be able to integrate with and talk with talk with providers. So that's a, so that's that's a more hybrid model. I'm getting a bit of feedback from your mind. Uh, I'll just turn to you with, with the questions and then we can deal with it from there. So, Tara, I guess, based on what Bill is talking about in terms of definitions of cloud, did you feel like you there was a good common understanding of tantrums about cloud and what it is and what it isn't before you started down this path? Um, well, I mean, I think there's been a lot of confusion over time in the marketplace of what Ooh, I'm getting heavy feedback. Sounds fine. Sounds fine. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. So I think that, that we've all had to educate ourselves to get on the same page as to what cloud really means. And maybe we're still working on that. I'm not sure. Um, I knew that if we were going to sell it internally here, we were going to have to have something that was the safest <laughs> that I could support. Um, with the security group, with the privacy group, with all of those other groups. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Well, uh, a couple of comments have comments, uh, come in that I uh, would uh, serve. So, uh, uh, Chris Walker was talking about my comment about S and says that uh, uh, you know this is exactly why you know enterprise content management needs to span all locations and repositories that contain documents and info, and I think that that goes back to something you had said, Tara, about, you know, part of the key value for you in going down this path, um, you know, there's the economic factors, but ultimately there's a governance factor in your ability to actually get this stuff into a location that you can start to manage it, so that's a good comment. Now, Randy Maller had a, a question, uh, Bill, that maybe you have a view on, which is, uh, he says, is some of the cloud fear due to folks not using resources like the Cloud Security Alliance and vetting their cloud service providers. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, th I think that's a, that's a really good point. Um, uh, when you look at the deployment uh, in um, uptick and usage of cloud um, within organizations, uh, at times uh, these decisions are made either personally or they may be made um, from a line of business. Uh, and when, um, when those types of things happen, uh, there's, uh, I think historically, there hasn't been the same level of due diligence and control over usages, uh, usage of those types of cloud providers, uh, and um, the approach that may have been, um, that, or that is taken today, I think, and, and or taken with regards to um, deployment of internal systems, um, uh, those types of requirements and those types of uh, protocols weren't necessarily applied. I think um, right. in the new world, um, with regards to um, uh, some of these uh, industry standards. I, I think that on the federal side, there was just a, a three-part um, set of documents that were released um, post this OPM uh, breach that happened, um, really dictating how uh, third-party uh, cloud providers needed to um, integrate with um, any types of any type of government Works and right. so I, I think there's there's a few standards out there and there's some um, specifically some uh, um, some initiatives that um, I think address this and I think security should be in data data security data privacy should be top of mind for all of us and making sure that our systems um, are uh, you know are uh, uh, have the right level of protection and and specifically when you think about that a cloud provider is going to be integrated into your on-premise environment. Uh, and there's data flowing back and forth, um, the uh, protocols and the pedigree of that cloud provider and understanding how you need to run your business uh, is critically important. So it sounds like, you know, we're, we're in the midst of an industry that's growing up, you know, cloud computing, as you say, has you know, been around in various forms for quite a long time, and there's, uh, you know, probably our perceptions of, of what it is and what it can do, and certainly in the, in the, on, the, on the serious side of, of business and implementation, uh, as you say, there's standards, there's uh, you know, a better understanding of security and, and hopefully a move towards transparency among providers and so on, which I think uh, all bodes well. Well, let's turn our attention now to specifically to e-discovery uh, in the cloud and, and what's different about it. <clears throat> um, one of the things that I, you know, and we were talking about this this morning, Bill, is, is you know, we probably need to be clear up front about what we mean when we talk about e-discovery in the cloud, and I think there's uh, you know a couple of different perceptions there. Do you want to just uh, share your thoughts on that so we can zero in on exactly what we're going to talk about uh, when we talk about e-discovery? Certainly, I think um, just to to level set, uh, you know, we're really we're in, uh, today's conversation, and I think uh, the the uh, excellent white paper that you produced really points to. Um, that uh, you, that cloud provider as an extension or really an augmentation of your on-prem or your existing uh, infrastructure and, and systems. And when you have um, a, a cloud provider that is storing uh, either managing applications, storing content, those types of things, 
you know, how are you going to um, uh, to perform those those critical e-discovery tasks um, in that environment, and or what capabilities do they have to enable it for you? Right. Uh, that's very different than um, some people might um, think about uh, more of a traditional um, e-discovery um, provider that where you send them a big set of data uh, and they're going to put that into their um, their system and do um, you know the dedupes and, and and prepare the information for and work with perhaps your outside legal team um, to uh, prepare that uh, that case and that data set for um, uh, discovery and and, uh, and production those kinds of things that's a different um, you know uh, use case not what we're talking about uh, today we're really talking about your organization's content is now living active content is living in multiple types of clouds right um, what 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 types of uh, governance and control do you have and what functionality and capabilities do you have to, pre to perform those necessary lit uh, litigation support functions so just to, from a clarity standpoint. Yeah, and I think it's a great point. I mean, there's in the last couple of months, the SEC has specifically, you know, called attention in kind of its cybersecurity effort to the network of suppliers and providers that support financial services institutions, and actually explicitly called out uh, law firms as a potential, you know, source of, um, you know, maybe a weak link in the chain or what have you. Uh, and security and demanding that you know banks and brokers, uh, uh, you know, push down their their cybersecurity standards to them. And I think there's, um, I think that's a, a a real issue. And and uh, there's a, a whole set of complex issues there. But as you say, I think today what we want to focus on, and and uh, I'll, I'll move over to Tara. And hopefully we still have her. I know we, we had some technical difficulties there. Um, but Tara, if you're there, um, can you just share your thoughts on you know, e-discovery in the cloud. Now that you're, like you say, you're, you're well down, well down. So, so you know, how have you approached it? Sure. Um, so where we were before is we were able to manage e-discovery from end to end with that model. But we had control from the beginning to the production. So we were concerned about a couple of things. And the first was accessibility. Were we going to be able to get to our data, to pull the data back into our environment and potentially our own review platforms, as, as Bill mentioned? Um, because our lawyers are comfortable working there and our e-discovery team is comfortable working there. And we also allow outside access from outside counsel. So we didn't want to do that for our cloud. Um, another thought we had is, what about the volume? What if we had a large class action? We certainly can't support pulling that information. So what support will we need from our partner, and how will we write that into our <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's got the one-hour <laughs> I'm not sure what that's sure what that was. <laughs> Sounds like there was a uh, uh, party on the line. Did we lose you, Tim? Well, are well, you guys good. able to hear me clearly? Yeah, we, we yeah, were. And we then were. Then uh, it sounded like about like 20 people broke into the office. But go ahead. I think we're good now. Okay, let's, let's try that. <laughs> and so when we were. Um, when we're managing large volumes of information, especially the email space, we also have to consider the performance impacts of running those searches and executing those holds in, in our working area, in our working time. Um, so what we did, I think, was prepare to recognize all of those up front and built that support and those requirements into our service agreement. Um, we spent, as I'm going to say over and over, a lot of time getting the service agreement right. And when you look, when you think, when you think about what you focused on in that service agreement, Sarah, what, what, what was kind of your number one concern in, in that process? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to repeat that for me. It's okay. It's okay. Um, so um, when you so think about negotiating that service agreement, 
what was, the, what was sort of the biggest, the biggest top of mind if you were drafting and negotiating around? I think top of mind timeliness is, is something that you have to build in because you're not the only customer that the cloud provider has. So you have to be reasonable about what your expectations are for the information being pulled if you do have a large amount of information. Because of course when it's your environment and the lawyers start jumping up and down, you can, you can kind of have a call to action for everybody. But when you have a cloud service provider with other customers, then you you have to depend on the service levels that you've agreed to. So I think that that's, I, I mean, that's the negotiation you're going to find is that you can't have it at the moment you need it or at, you think you need it is what it really comes down to. It. Um, so you need to build those expectations into the service level agreement. And you also need to build those expectations with your internal customers. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's a nice segue, nice segue actually, into uh, uh, the slide you can see on the screen, which is, is you know, we, we, we in the we, white paper, we, we called we, out, out different, different uh, I think, key differences when you start to deal with e-discovery in the cloud. And, you know, um, uh, you know Bill, Bill, you and I can kind of just walk through these. But as Tara mentioned, you, you know, there is this, you know, perhaps this change in, in thinking that you need to go through, which is that you now have a third party, uh, you know, that's uh, in bed with you, and you need to, you know, work on that relationship, right? You need to make sure that that, you, I think is the last thing Tara said, which is, yes, it's, it's a different process, perhaps, that you go through when the house is on fire and you have to get to this stuff, but you can build the, the expectations of that process into your new process, and that's probably where you see most of your clients being successful when they think of it that way. Is that is that what you see out there, Bill? Yeah, I mean, I, I think um, you know what is that um, overall uh, business process that you have within your organization, and um, you know how did you uh, in the past, um, you know, if you're if you've moved uh, content applications into the cloud. Um, you know, what was the process that you used before, um, and how is that process now going to work um, uh, in a cloud deployment model? Um, it could be significantly more efficient if, uh, if much of the data was spread around to different repositories. The um, search functionality and extraction functionality varied greatly. Um, I mean, we've seen in, in many customers, um, you know, a significant amount of resources dedicated to that liaison function between the legal teams, the IT organizations, and the line of business to be able to really um, identify custodians, identify content, be able to collect that all up, uh, and then to be able to uh, then take it uh, and do the necessary uh, tasks and functions you need to do to that. So when you have information in a centralized uh, repository uh, with very powerful search um, and export functionality, uh, then uh, and you're able to do global searches against that. I think right. you right. improve the situation uh, greatly, but I think Tara's points are well taken, um, depending upon who your cloud service provider is, um, and, uh, and, and even regardless of who your cloud service provider is, you have to go in um, with the uh, expectation of uh, the expectation of um, those service level agreements, the, the, uh, what those requirements are, Right, uh, and when, that there's a common uh, lexicon between the organizations um, with regards to what's going to happen when, where, and how. Well, I think as Tara described too, it, it's you know it, it's probably the first time that an organization goes through this for a, a major um, enterprise or or a critical system. It's it's probably painful in the sense that it's a different kind of thinking. It's a different.